Yes, South Carolina voters head to the polls for Tuesday's Republican primary. Voters, in voters are trying to fill Congressman Trey Gowdy's district. There is no shortage of candidates to choose from. Congressman Gowdy is not seeking re-election. He served four terms. There's a total of 18 candidates on the ballot to fill the seat. Josh Kimbrell, a friend of the show, is one of those candidates, and he joins us now. Josh, thank you so much for joining us. So I, I said there were 18, and there are actually 12 Republicans. There's 18 total candidates because we have, obviously, the Democratic side as well. I'm sort of curious as to how Republicans are, Republicans are distinguishing themselves when there are so many in the field right now. Well, first off, it's good to be with you. Uh, just it was sad I'm not there in studio, but I'm here in the greatest state in the union in South Carolina in Spartanburg County today. And, uh, you know, there is a crowded field. Twelve Republicans remain in this race. But all of us, of course, are trying to make sure we clearly uh, communicate to the voters where we stand on issues. And you, you've got to in this district, you have to be a fiscal, social and national security conservative. That's been our message. And that seems to be resonating. And and that's what folks here believe in. That's what they got with Trey Gowdy. OK, now. How are Republicans setting themselves apart? So if I'm not mistaken, you had a town hall event, town hall-ish, like a forum on Wednesday. And I'm curious because some of the critics were saying everyone was trying to align themselves closer to Trump, meaning there wasn't any way to distinguish between those 12 candidates. So how are you doing that? Well, I think every person is, of course, supporting the president. And I think all Republicans in this primary want the president to succeed. We want him to succeed on immigration. We want him to be successful on reducing the deficit and bringing down the debt. But all of us have a different skill set in how to make that happen. And, and each one of us is drawing contrast. What's our life experience? What's our business experience? What have we actually done uh, to this point? Because anybody can say anything during a campaign. I mean, you all know that. You see that all the time. So what we're trying to communicate is look at our record, look at what we've done, look at what I've done. Here's why I'm best qualified to go serve the 4th District in Congress and continue a conservative legacy. So all of us agree that we want to be supportive of the president, but then we're all distinguishing ourselves by what are our strengths, what's our background, and how can we best serve uh, and best be that ally in Congress. Okay, I'm curious as to what issues you found really the most hotbed out of out of that discussion on Wednesday. Are we talking about immigration? Are we talking about people seeing the effects of, of tax reform? What are what are South Carolinians really concerned about ahead of Tuesday? Because if if there are 12 folks, you know, it's going to go to a runoff unless someone gets 50 percent plus one, and among 12 people, it's going to be really hard to get to 50 percent. Oh, the likelihood of a runoff is quite high. We expect there's going to be one. We, we're kind of preparing for that. What I can tell you, the two greatest issues people are worried about in South Carolina, and I think this is true of Republican voters across the country, uh, are trillion-dollar deficits and, un, uh, and open borders. And that's what we've been talking about every day, whether I'm in a debate or whether I'm at a coffee shop, is how do we end trillion-dollar deficits? We cannot continue to go from $20 trillion in debt to maybe $40 trillion in the next 10, 20 years. We'll be a very large version of Greece in short order, and we literally cannot afford that. People are also deeply concerned about for decades we've had uh, virtually an open border policy. There are millions of people in the country unauthorized, not supposed to be here. We have gangs, we have violence coming across the southern border. And, and people are worried, what do we do to bring down the deficit? What do we do to reduce the debt? And, and what do we do to get control of our borders again? Because if we don't have control of our borders, we're not really a country. Well, and, and like you said, those are issues that not only South Carolinians are concerned about, but, but for the most part, voters across the nation. My last question is you did pick up a major endorsement who who uh, what group is now supporting you and has that propelled you well, I'm thrilled to be endorsed by Club for Growth. This is the same organization that supported Jim DeMint and Jim Jordan and Tom Cotton and Ted Cruz and Mike Lee and all the great conservatives fighting on Capitol Hill every day. I can't be, I, I'm so thankful to be in the company of those conservative giants. I'm very thankful for the great work that Club for Growth is always engaged in in promoting limited government, liberty, and economic freedom. And I will be true to that endorsement in Congress. All right, Josh. Well, good luck on Tuesday. Keep us posted. We'll be watching. Thank you, sir. Thank you.